and then. Uh, well, y'all raised cattle. We raised cattle. Over there. And we had a little uh, dam thrown across the river. There was a red rock ledge up west of the house and throwed a dam across the river and made an irrigation ditch. And when it'd come a rise from rain, well, water'd come out mm -hmm. and we could flood a little patch down there. We had a little alfalfa patch and we'd raise hay to feed our cattle and horses, you know, through the, we'd raise our own hay that way with that alfalfa patch and uh, put up hay. And then we didn't have a whole lot of grass. Of course, later on, we got a little more country. We'd take our cattle north to summer pasture and driving about three days, mother's brother had some country up there and her parents had some country up there and they didn't have no cattle. So Papa would lease that grass from them and uh, we'd drive her cattle up there and leave them for the summer. Three day drive. And then we'd, three or four days, we'd three or four drip days. them back into the canyons for winter. And I guess the first year I was past 13 going on 14 and uh, that was the first year that uh, my brother and Papa, my older brother and little brother and Papa come on back home to do the hay and stuff through the summer. And I stayed up there and took care of the cattle, me and my horse up there. And uh, they had a, a little old crail and a shed and a barn place I could keep my horse and bed down and everything. And, of course, my aunt Lillian, uh, she had always tried to feed me and come over and make sure I got plenty to eat. She didn't think I knew how to cook for myself or whatever. But anyways, I stayed with the cattle. My first summer was staying with them by myself. I was going on 14 years old. And then that fall, when school started, well, I dropped back home horseback and go to school. And then long towards winter, well, I'd skip two or three days of school and we'd go trailer cattle back down. Then I'd go back to school. And uh, that was uh, my, I felt like a big shot, you know, I had it all by myself. Yeah, I could take yeah. care of the cattle and doctor them. And... Did y'all doctor and screw worms then, Henry, or? Well, not, not too bad then because we were smart enough then to know not to have no calves come at a certain time of yeah, year because the right. flies would blow their navel. That's right. And it'd kill them. Yep. And if they did, well, I had a, uh, something did happen. I had a can of KRS and uh, they, Papa, he didn't want me using the rope by myself up there. He said, you're too young to use the rope. So I'd have to bring them and pin them and put them behind the squeezing gate or something to the crail to doctor them. We'd get screw worms once in a while, wear a branded pill or something mm -hmm. like that, or uh, skin mark or pink eye get real bad and it get all mattered up and yeah. the screw worms would blow yeah. it. And you could see one as far as you could see them, you could tell what was the matter because they'd just be wringing their tail, just going in a circle, just slinging their head, and the screw worms would be eating them, and they'd hurt. Yeah. And uh, you could squirt some KRS in there and. Then, and they have holes, and then things would just come out of there, just and then that KRS would yeah. keep the flies from going back and mm -hmm. blowing in. But sometimes you'd see half of their jaw eat off, and where that pink eye mattered down, and them screw worms would get in it. I remember I was on that LA ranch in '62, one or two, three down in there, and we had doctor six or eight head a day, every day. All we did was went from pasture to pasture to pasture. We'd get through with one pasture, we'd start the next pasture, just made a circle. When we wasn't working on windmills, we was stirring the cattle, doctoring, doctoring. And then they got some airplanes and government and turned a bunch of sterile flies loose. And the next summer we had three cases on that whole dang right. uh, That's... Uh, LE ranch. That was 211 right. sections. And our, we had some little 20,000 acre pastures. Little, 20,000 acre pastures. <laughs> and you know, that's just the way that was. Yeah. We, one set of crowds, that was at headquarters. You ship cattle there and you receive cattle there. And everything else was a horseback. You sold your cattle, you bunched them or throwed them in a fence corner to work them. 
and lots of times they'd have net water down the fence corners both ways. Yeah. And you'd hold them cattle, and that's you'd rope them, heel them, drag them out, or double hawk them if they was big cattle. And but that's the way you'd work them and brand them and doctor them and everything else. You just and when them cattle got big, you'd have to go in pairs. Yeah, it was, it was too hard for you to yeah. trip one and get to him mm -hmm. and shackle him yep. before he could get back up, and then get your medicine sack and doctor him. Yep. And then uh, turn him loose and hook one foreleg over his horn and, and try to get back in the saddle before he got loose and eat you up. That's right. And it's hell getting on a snaky horse out running a mad cow, I'll tell you for sure. <laughs> you, can't keep, you can't keep that horse between you uh, and that no, cow. No, no, no. And, and that's uh, what you've got to do. And you got she, to keep she ain't going to, she makes a run at you. If, if you do get by, she might snuff and go on by you, but she's liable to hook you. Coming, mm -hmm. And if she's real pissed off, she's liable to gut your horse. And it's just pretty, it's just better to have two when you. Yeah, yeah. I've done it by myself, but it, it's kind of. Dangerous work. You better have a good, big, stout horse. Yep. You better yep. bust them hard. Yep, yep. Them And you're going to break a few up. legs mm -hmm. and break a few necks mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But anyways. What type of cattle were you running at the time? We was just running mostly yearlings down there. We had, uh, they brought us in 300 head of Herefords. And uh, it was our first, and we uh, calved them out. And uh, well, they bred the Hereford bulls. Yeah, Henry. We, we calved them out and uh, kept them, and had calves off of them. And then they sold them cows, and the rest of the time it was back on yearlings. Were the Longhorn crosses still, or well, part of them was they was just mixed cattle from everywhere. So there, some of them was blacks and. Angus and Charlays, and some of them had a little, uh, you know, rammer in them, Hindu blood, yeah, and just everything, and mostly just yearlings. Uh, the biggest bunch of cattle I was ever behind is when we gathered that north side. We come out of there with 2,400 head of cattle in one bunch. Golly, and that's the biggest bunch of cattle I was ever behind. Well, that's a pile of cattle, Henry. And when we. How many hands? How many hands did we have? We had 12. When we, when we crossed the highway, we had to cross the highway going between Cap Rock and Roswell, because it runs through the middle of the ranch. It run through there for 23 miles. And- All we, dirt then. We had hell getting them across the road. We had to shovel dirt and stuff on the road, but finally we get them across the road. And the pavement? Yeah. And we was, yeah, we were still getting the road. drags across the road when they, keep them them, slipping. when they was pinning them at headquarters. Mm -hmm. And they strung out for 13 miles down that. It was a straight fence from all the way to headquarters to the crails from the highway down there where we crossed. Well, I want you to tell now about the first drive that you was on where your daddy sent you on the head and you rode up in that ranch yard. Oh, I was, I think that was the year I stayed with the cattle. It was I'd the first been, year, wasn't it? I I'd think been it was going that. On oh, that's right. And, that's right. Yeah, I rode up to the Alexander Ranch and it was getting long towards Eden. And uh, finally, Annie Alexander come to the door. Well, yes, can I help you? And I said, yes, ma'am, we, we're taking our cattle north to pasture and we need a fence corner to hold them in or, you know, till morning. Overnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, we're about an hour back down here. And she says, well, where's your daddy, little boy? I said, oh, Papa, he went on back. Uh, he had to, we come up calf short and he had to take a cow back and get her behind the fence mm -hmm. because that calf was going to go back to where he sucked last. That's right. And she had a calf would have starved to death. That's right. So we didn't come up with the calf, and she's a ballin'. So we cut her out, and she started back. And uh, he left the wagon there and got one of the remuda, and he followed her back and led her through the fence, a couple of fences, so she could find her calf. Yeah. And then he come on back and got the wagon. I said, he'll be along directly. He's bringing the wagon. And we went on up there. How many horses was in the remuda, Henry? 
I think we, all we had was, uh, there was us three boys and Papa, we were four. We had two spare horses. We had six horses. We just had two spare horses. But we was, we was just following them slow, you know. Yeah, we, yeah. What, and we'd let them graze along, you know. We was, we was, you couldn't push them. We had baby calves. Yeah. And that's why, it was, that's why it was so dang slow, you that's know. Right. Eight or, right. ten, eight or ten miles is, but anyway. That's about all you can do in a day. So she said, yeah, we, and she showed me a fence corner up there just to the, I guess it had been just to the south to where the JJs used to hold their cattle when they was going to the hunter to the stockyards on drives from the old Cross Hill Ranch. But that old picket fence is still there again, that foothill. But anyways, she said we could use that fence corner, so when Papa got back, we had them all paired off and where nothing was bawling and trying to go back. And we had us a, 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 a rope deal fixed over the hold of Horse horses. Corral. We was waiting on him and he got back with a wagon. And here comes Annie over there. And her, she had a, an old car of some kind. I think it's an old. 30 some, 30 some model Plymouth car, she come over there. No, sir, we wasn't gonna sleep down there with them scorpions and centipedes. <laughs> Us boys had to go to the house and she made us sleep on the porch. And she fed us mutton. They they had a sheep ranch there. And she fed us mutton. That was the first time I'd ever eat sheep. And I was going ahead of the cattle out there and it come to a pond, you know, and we hadn't watered the cattle and I rode on up there see where we could water them and, and uh, there was water in that pond but there was a bunch of sheep but bleh! and that horse boogered and I oh, couldn't man, hold him he and I mean seen we had to run like away <laughs> we went a quarter of a mile and I pulled him around he was still snorting trying to run it took me an hour to get him back up there back towards the cattle and <laughs> Yeah, I'm not I, laughing I at you. Yeah. I finally, I finally <laughs> I got did, back to the. He ain't ever seen no damn sheep before. Oh my gosh, he, he had the damnedest son way you ever seen. <laughs> we got back to the cattle, got them over there, watered them, and then put them in that fence corner yeah. for the night. 